So today we're going to talk about more ways to improve Blender. As usual, it was a lot of fun to see what other add-ons you guys thought should be on by default too. I only talked about Node Wrangler, but honestly there was a lot of awesome really good ones you mentioned in the comments, so hopefully the Blender team will get on that in the near future. Also, Active Motion Pictures was kind enough to share the technical reason why the add-on is not on by default, and the reason seems to be community-maintained add-ons are generally not active by default. And I can understand that. I even agree with it. But my next question then becomes, why is Wrangler an add-on at all? I mean, at this point, it really should just be integrated directly into the main system. If we look at the official Blender release video, we can see all the auxiliary features that the devs decided were useful enough to integrate directly and permanently into the main system. More in-between tools, king sets, pose libraries, motion paths, cycle X updates, the asset browser, and the new system for the geometry nodes. These are all now built directly directly into Blender. And I just find it hard to believe that integrating all those new features is somehow less difficult than integrating Node Wrangler's features. The point of an add-on is to address things that the core software has not yet developed. But the Wrangler system is obviously superior to the standard system. I can understand Wrangler being an add-on for Blender 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, but after the overhaul of 3.0, I think it's about time for the Wrangler system to stop being an add-on and just be baked directly into the native Blender system, just like all the other new features that have now become part of default Blender. So that's my two cents on integrating the Wrangler system by default. Speaking of defaults, let's talk about some awesome things that Blender could improve within the default system right now. How many of you have ever tried to apply a transparent texture map by connecting a transparent map into the transparent plug? only to find no transparency being applied. Now, I don't know the exact number of people who wasted their time looking online wondering why their transparent texture was not being very transparent, but I do know that is the reason that 36,000 of you ended up on my channel. And if you watch my tutorial, you'll quickly learn that when you drag a transparent texture into the transparent plug, you won't see any transparency unless you go down to the materials, settings, blend mode, and set it to alpha clip, blend, or opaque. See, it's pretty industry standard for everyone to know that alpha is the word we all use for transparency. So I think it's pretty reasonable to assume that a new user would be able to put two and two together and figure out that you're supposed to drag the alpha from the texture map into the alpha of the shader. But I think it's unreasonable to expect them to figure out that you also need to go into the settings and switch modes right after. I personally didn't even know these options existed until I ran into this problem myself. So here's my recommendation to fix this for Blender 3.1. If someone drags a transparent texture map into the transparent plug, Blender should automatically switch to a mode that can view transparency. Because why else would anyone drag anything into the transparent plug? I think it's pretty obvious that a new user is not going to figure this out on their own, and is going to waste a lot of time looking for my tutorial just to find 5 seconds of information telling him to click here. It's not an add-on, you don't need to build anything new, just make the current system automatically make the needed adjustments to see transparency when a user drags a map into the transparent node. That's my recommendation. Feel free to leave any other ideas down in the comments. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day. Now, see you around.